Hello ladies and gentlemen, here to a new tutorial on industrial digital alchemy. Today I want to introduce and show you the Axiom Solver for Houdini. So what is actually Axiom? As you can see in the scene here, created with some Quixel assets and a Redshift renderer, Axiom allows you to create fire, smoke, explosions and different natural ph phenomena directly on your graphics card. So it's using the GPU, the graphics computing units to calculate all those velocity and turbulence fields you need for explosions X or from the normal Houdini explosion solvers it's using OpenCL from your graphics card and it supports the OpenVDB file library so on the download button you enter your email and you can get version 2 for Houdini 18 and 18.5 right away when you subscribe so let's jump into Houdini and check out how Axiom is used within some scene setup. So here in good old Houdini, you pretty much can find Axiom when you installed it on the tablet here in I made an Axiom network. And when you hit tab and write axiom, we have here the point rasterizer, the solver itself, the axiom source shape, axiom velocity trail, and those are the four you pretty much need to make some sparse and gridless magic happen. So this quick setup pretty much is only using some files from CG Trader. It then scatters points on the geometry. And those scatter nodes, those points are later then piped into this pyrosource. So this pyrosource is what is creating the attributes for the later solving in the Axiom Solver. So we have here fuel, temperature and velocity. And those are pretty much needed for the creation of this high flame plume-like tower. And I'm using a default value in the temperature of two. And everything else is set to one. And the particle separation is pretty low also depending on your computer settings and computer hardware. The attributes created here are then piped into a attribute noise, which is putting the position of fuel temperature and velocity in the point class to an alligator noise. You can change and experiment here with different noise types, for example, whirly or periodic or sinusoid noise. And I'm using a maximum of two and some pulse duration and some fractal hybrid terrain. So important is that this is then put into the VDB from particles, which generates the volume database, which is needed for our Axiom solver here. So when we look inside here, we have the main tab, which pretty much sets the beginning of your simulation, the sub steps, which mean the amount of calculations that are created 
per frame. So three calculations per frame, which makes it a bit more accurate. And the fields I described before, like you remember, fuel, temperature and velocity. Those fields are pretty much here in the division size of 0 0.05 and we have a major amount of voxels, those tiny volumetric pixels. So the main brain of the Axiom Solver can be seen here. I'm using the reflection mode, not the traditional one. And we want to use memory efficient calculations, which always depend on your RAM and your um, hard drive to uh, later lay down RAM calculations when the RAM is filling full. You can change also speed when you need very fast uh, blockouts and concepts. And you can change your CPU, GPU and manually your graphics card that is in your machine. I'm using an RTX 3060. How did you get one? So this is okay. And to go on, we go to the sourcing. So the sourcing is always the place where things come from. And I'm using a source here with a density of one. Temperature, fuel and velocity get a value of four. And everything else is set to one because I'm using a normal box here. This box is cutting up and cutting away the creation below this plume with the axiom source shape, which I also or already explained in the beginning. When you hit tab on your keyboard, you can access your axiom source shape here. And you can also create sources influences, collisions, think, pump or camera frustum. So in this case in, in this case of the scene, I'm using collision for, for the box and this is going inside of my axiom solver. So the simulation itself, it's always important to play around with the time scale, especially when you use explosions, because time scale can um, pretty much have an impact on how fast and how slow some simulation is running and therefore it can define the uh, look and the feeling of some, some explosion or element. So mostly very big explosions uh, are pretty low when you think about uh, nuclear explosions. They start very fast with the impact and then later on go up in the air very slow and create this mushroom-like Chernobyl cloud in the air. So that's why I use this time scale of two here to have some fast rising up in the air for dissipation, which is how much the density field dissipates per time step means in German how fast your density is vanishing or disappearing over time. And for the temperature, you can set how the cooling rate, how long or how fast the temperature inside your creation is cooling down or how long temperature is staying inside your simulation. And the diffusion, how quickly the temperature field will diffuse. Think of this as a blurring the temperature field. So for the velocity, which is the speed of the forces inside of your uh, creation, we have here the buoyancy, 
buoyancy is uh, how, how fast velocity is pretty much evolving from the inside to the outside in your explosion or um, smoke column or whatever so this pretty much defines how fast it's rising you also can put this to negative then everything would go down like a, a dry ice I have some wind here to add some more realism which is also um, reworked by Matt in the version 2 of Axiom and I have here turbu Disturbance 1, 2, Turbulence 1, Turbulence 2 and the Confinement and all those um, forces inside the velocity field are also accessible down here in the control field tab so for disturbance one i have a cutout field where i use the velocity with a cutoff of 0 0.2 and disturbance two has also fuel uh, sorry has fuel turbulence one has the velocity and the speed of 8 and we have a swirl size of 0 0.2 some gain to make uh, the velocity turbulence more um, sharper and you pretty much can play a lot around with those values to achieve different results as axiom is pretty fast in the calculation and it's also a sparse solver so you don't need to take care about the uh, grid sizes and the uh, division of your grids like you know it from FumeFX from uh, explosion shelf tools and so on or the normal pyro um, source in Houdini and we have here the confinement which adds pretty little detail to the simulation so this is a pretty much for the calculation part as I'm using redshift for the shading and rendering I want to also give a little introduction into the RS volume, redshift volume to shade your axiom um, element and as you can see here we have the scatter channel which is set to density, to the density field. I have a scatter coefficient of 10 you can remap it important here is the absorption coefficient which is set to 11 and for the emission I have temperature the temperature field with a scale of 22 and this ramp here is very very familiar to to other packages available so here you can set the color of your smoke and fire plume and the um, end result is pretty much this kind of effect here. Still not done in rendering but you can get an idea. And last but not least, I would like to give you some advice for the color space of your scene. As maybe some people know that open color IO is available. You should definitely check your color settings for the OCIO configuration. Always make sure it points to the right path. And also make sure when you use your camera that you also enable 
the color management for the OCIO file, which can be seen here. It's the config OCO that is relative to the one in the color settings here. And this gives um, a very cool color management, which makes this um, effect of the shading and also this blurry um, depth of field here when the branches are passing. This is all happening with the open OCIO. You can get more information about OpenColor.io on opencolor.io.org. And it's a complete color management solution geared towards motion picture production with an emphasis on visual effects and computer animation. Sounds cool is cool. And here are also the supported software packages like Blender, who everybody loves, Photoshop, Beloved Houdini, After Effects, Substance Designer, Maya, and so on. Definitely should check out this page, watch the reel here, and click here on the download button to download the sample OCIO configuration. And when you are uh, stuck in how to set this up, just check out the other tutorial on, on my channel that goes in depth how to set up this configuration path. It's pretty self-explaining, but sometimes there are more forests than wood in the forest. This is not funny, it's some life philosophy. So if you still have questions, make sure that on the redshift light you make the contribution scale to 1. This is something that is often be overseen, so that your volume is recognized by this uh, redshift lights. And for the redshift renderer, I'm using a medium threshold for the bucket quality and I'm using global illumination, good old brute force, irradiance point cloud and motion blur to blur everything that should not be seen in detail. So we are at the end of this short but uh, funny tutorial. I hope you learned something. Stay tuned for further great content. We are working on different stuff we want to showcase with you guys. And if you have questions, just write in, comment, please subscribe and have a great day. See you soon.